Joining us right now, Chairman of the Texas Republican Party, Alan West, who has been doing the job of getting out the vote, making sure that voters are registered. And we're going to talk with him about that. But I've got to get him to weigh in about just what this video shows. And what was that what was that campaign thinking by having their people in that crossover trying to run a truck off the road? Uh, Good to be with you, my friend. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, thanks for having me on, Dana. And really, truthfully, uh, you know, this whole thing has been blown out of proportion. I never saw anybody in the media talking about this past year. You've had three Trump supporters executed, one in Portland, one in Denver, and a black man in Milwaukee. Uh, They kind of blew over the whole thing with the McCloskey family. Think about all the times we've seen Trump supporters that have been beaten and attacked for wearing, you know, MAGA hats or anything that supported the president. And now all of a sudden, you know, I've got the Texas Tribune calling me and asking me to comment about this foolishness, about this bus thing. Look, the reason why this bus has left the great state of Texas is that at every single stop, you have more Trump supporters that were at these stops than you have people to see Kamala Harris or anybody else. And that's why they have canceled the rest of their 14 stops. And furthermore, we don't want progressive socialism in the state of Texas. We don't want to be transitioning from oil and gas. We don't want to have undermining of our Second Amendment rights. Yeah, true to that. I mean, and I ke- I saw the the turnout at, at all the stops that they were making, well, that they that they did make in Texas. There were a lot of Trump supporters out there. And I never saw anything untoward from the Trump supporters. They were just peacefully demonstrating and they had their flags and that's pretty much all they were doing and the video with the bus I mean they were just on the highway as well and then the crossover tried to do what it did but you make a great point in how many times I wonder has the Texas Tribune talked about uh, incidents that have happened in the Republic of Texas where Trump supporters have been targeted or people have had hats knocked off their head or there's been any kind of vandalism or anything like that. I don't remember them ever really focusing on all the incidents of Trump supporters being attacked and I mean legitimately attacked. This was the campaign itself, one of its vehicles trying to run a truck off the road. Uh, but uh, you're, you, yeah. you bring up a great point in contrasting that. Well, absolutely. And, you know, the Texas Tribune is also headquartered down here in Austin, Texas, mm. where the Republican Party of Texas headquarters is. And I've yet to see the uh, Texas Tribune criticizing the Austin mayor uh, and also three city council members and their city council that defunded the police by $150 million. And now you have the most, one of the most violent uh, cities in the, in the country, which is Austin, Texas, 63% increase in violent crime. So again, you know, this is that last dish effort to try to demonize, denigrate, and demean uh, Trump supporters, conservatives, but it doesn't work. The proof is right there what happened. And as far as I have been uh, told, the San Marcos police down where this incident happened is, uh, you know, written up their report charging the, uh, the Biden campaign. Ooh! Oh my goodness. Well, well, that would make sense, especially with what's seen on that video as well. And we'll watch to see how that unfolds. Uh, we're talking with uh, Alan West, who is the chairman of the Texas Republican Party and uh, is doing a lot with voter turnout. From what I understand, there are so many more registered Republican voters in Texas. And and you know, uh, as well as actually better than a lot of people, that historically Texas has always had low voter turn, low voter turnout. And I've been looking at some of the early numbers that have been coming in as it relates to my county and others. And the number of Republicans that have already come out to early vote has surpassed anything that we've seen before. What are you anticipating tomorrow? Well, you're absolutely right. Texas has about 16.2 million registered voters, and we have already hit 9.7 million total votes have been cast uh, in this early voting period. That's more than 2016. And right now, Republicans have a 6 percent lead over Democrats who have cast votes here in the state of Texas, and that's not including the unaffiliated. So I think that what you're going to see happening uh, tomorrow on Election Day, we know that Republicans always outperform Democrats on Election Day anywhere from 10 up to 15 percentage points. It's not going to be a good day for Joe Biden and the progressive socialists left in the great state of Texas tomorrow. Yeah, they can you I, I'm shocked that Cook Political moved Texas to a toss up status. What's your response to them doing that? I think he's delusional and I have not seen uh, Charlie Cook down here walking the ground. This past weekend, I was down through the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, We landed uh, in Harlingen, then we went over to McAllen, up to Rio Grande City, up to Laredo, to Eagle Pass, and to Del Rio. 
And what you saw happening down there in the Rio Grande Valley, four years ago you could you would be hard-pressed to find a Trump sign. Now you have signs, billboards, you have flags, you have tens of thousands out in the streets with Trump parades. Uh, you're going to see the Rio Grande Valley, previously deep blue, it's going to turn to a lighter shade of red in this election cycle. Yeah, yeah, I, and it, it's just amazing to think that Texas ever could be uh, even remotely close to being a toss-up like that. And and uh, I don't know. I'm just it's it, we have always warned what would happen with the to Republicans if if Texas was ever lost because yeah, I don't know if you'd ever be able to get a Republican in the White House again. Uh, and 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 looking at that is where does the uh, where does the Republican Party in Texas stand right now as it relates to the number of Republicans and all these Democrats, like we saw in Colorado with a lot of Democrats coming in from out of state and kind of changing. I mean, they didn't kind of. I mean, they entirely changed the political blueprint of that state. Do you are, are we at a point where we are effectively able to kind of push back on that in Texas as it relates to Republican uh, outreach and effort? Where do we stand on that? Because that's was the big question leading into this election. No, without a doubt, you still have, you know, far more registered Republicans than Democrats in the state of Texas, by about 11 to 13 percent. But the thing that we have seen happen in this election cycle is that the left went too far. Mm -hmm. And you have so many people, especially in minority communities, black, Hispanic, Asian communities, are saying no longer will they tolerate this party that is a part of socialism, Marxism, and even in some ways communism. When you look at this uh, group they have in Austin called the, Austin, the uh, Red Guards of Austin. So uh, I think that what we have done is a very good job of drawing the delineation between the principles and values of conservatism and the progressive socialists. But the key thing now, Dana, is that we have to maintain this momentum. We have to maintain this incredible engagement and uh, this historical without a doubt, phenomena that we see here, not just in Texas, but all across the country, and make sure that we just don't ramp up for an election cycle and then we fall off the cliff of the, of the earth. Because the left is not going to go away. They're going to right. continue to believe that they can get inroads into Texas, and we got to continue to defeat them. Yeah, last question for you. We're speaking with Alan West on the state of things in Texas, and we also were discussing that bus incident. Uh, Joe Biden's been traveling the country trying to deny that he said that he would end fracking and transition us away from oil and shut down the oil industry. He ended up sticking his foot in his mouth the last debate with the president. And when he talks about fracking, they, his campaign came out and said, oh, well, we're just we're just looking to stop it on federal federal property. But uh, that's not entirely true, because isn't it possible to regulate it uh, really to the to the point of of. Uh, almost nullifying it entirely on private land? I mean, isn't that something that they've also discussed kind of doing? I feel like that's a disingenuous thing that his campaign is putting out because uh, the regulation aspect of this as it relates to private enterprise would also be a game killer too, would it not? No, you're absolutely right. It's not just disingenuous, it's lying. Basically what you're going to see happening is going back to the days of the Obama administration when they used the Environmental Protection Agency as a weapon against uh, states and also against individuals. So they know what, you know, it's gotten out of the bag that Joe Biden, who is a supporter of the Green New Deal, Kamala Harris, who is a co-sponsor of the Green New Deal, we don't want that in Texas and in Pennsylvania. And I think you're going to see it even in New Mexico and also mm. Colorado. They're going to reject them. Goodness, I can't even imagine what that would look like in an economy if something like that was implemented. Alan West, we know that you're traveling. You've been doing great work and and making sure that the vote gets out and republicans are registered and uh i know a lot of people in texas are glad you are at the helm of that thank you so much for your time today and i know we'll be following up this week after ever all after all the results come in and we can see what comes out in the wash it's good to be with you thank absolutely. you absolutely i look forward to chatting with you Dana. absolutely take care thank you my friend